Hey everybody, in this video we'll be discussing precipitation titrations. Precipitation titration is a quantitative technique that analyzes the concentration of a particular substance by measuring volume. This is why it is often referred to as a volumetric analysis. As suggested by the name, this analytical technique involves both precipitation and titration. It is recommended that you watch the video on titration in the acid base module before this video. Unlike conventional titration, precipitation titration uses the formation of a precipitate, usually with a unique color, to indicate the endpoint of the titration. In this video, we'll use two common methods of precipitation titration to demonstrate key features you need to know for this analytical technique. The techniques are Moore's method and Bohart's method. Moore's method aims to quantify the concentration of chloride ions in a given solution. The method involves dispensing a solution of silver nitrate from the burette into the conical flask, which contains the chloride ions that we want to analyze. The conical flask also contains some amount of potassium chromate, which is the indicator of this titration. When the stopcock of the burette is opened, silver ions react with chloride ions to form a white precipitate, that is silver chloride. This is seen in the conical flask in the second picture in the middle. It's important to add silver nitrate in excess so that all chloride ions in the solution are precipitated. When all chloride ions are reacted, the excess amount of silver ions added will start to react with the chromate ions that was also present in the conical flask. This reaction produces another precipitate, but this time the precipitate has a distinct red color as you can see in the third picture. As the red precipitate is easily observable, when it is formed, the stopcock of the burette is closed to stop the addition of silver nitrate. The formation of silver chromate precipitate is used as an endpoint of this precipitation titration method. Two key concepts to take away from Moore's method are that the silver ions only react with the chromate ions when all the chloride ions in the solution have already precipitated. And this is only made possible because silver ions preferentially precipitate with chloride ions over chromate ions. Secondly, the number of moles of chloride ions in the solution equals the number of moles of silver ions due to the one-to-one -one stoichiometric ratio in their precipitation reaction. The number of moles of silver ions is calculated by multiplying its concentration by the tidal volume that's recorded in the burette when the endpoint is observed. Let's reinforce the concepts in Moore's method by looking at a calculation example. Excess amount of 0.05 mol per liter solution of silver nitrate is added to 50 milliliters of a solution containing chloride ions. Some amount of potassium chromate is added and used as indicator, and the endpoint of titration is marked by the formation of silver chromate as we saw earlier. The average titer volume after 5 repeats is 18.5 milliliters. And using these information, we are asked to calculate the concentration of chloride expressed in moles per liter. So first of all, the amount of chloride ions equals to the number of moles of silver ions that reacted, and this is due to a one-to-one -one ratio. The number of silver ions is equal to its concentration, 0.05, multiplied by the tidal volume, so that's 18.5 milliliters, divided by 1,000 to get the liters. This gives us 9.25 times 10 to minus 4 moles. And as we said earlier, this is also the number of moles of chloride ions. We can then find the concentration of chloride ions by dividing the number of moles by the volume of the solution that we analyzed, and this was 50 milliliters. This gives us 0.0185 mole per liter. Moore's method relies on the formation of silver chromate precipitates as a marker of the endpoints. Therefore, a disadvantage of this method is that it cannot be used if the solution containing the chloride ions is acidic. This is because in acidic environments, chromate ions are protonated to produce chromic acid, which can no longer precipitate with silver ions. The next method we'll discuss is Vohart's method. Like Moore's method, Vohart's method also aims to measure the concentration of chloride ions in a given solution by producing precipitates. First, excess silver nitrate is added to the chloride solution to produce silver chloride, 
which is a white precipitate shown in the first picture. When all chloride ions are reacted, filtration is performed to filter the precipitate, and the filtrate is titrated against sodium thiocyanate, which is placed in the burette. Some amount of iron-3 nitrate solution is also added to the conical flask as the indicator of this titration. When thiocyanate ions are added to excess silver ions from the previous reaction, they produce a white precipitate, silver thiocyanate. Now, when all excess silver ions have precipitated in this reaction, the excess thiocyanate ions will then react with the iron-3 plus ions that was present in the conical flask. This will form a metal complex with a distinct blood red color, iron thiocyanate. This is shown in the third picture. The formation of this red complex marks the end point of Vohard's method. A major difference between Vohard's and Moore's method is that this is an example of a back titration. The method starts with precipitation between silver and chloride ions, followed by filtration to obtain the filtrate, which contains excess silver ions. This is then titrated with thiocyanate, and the titer volume is recorded. Titration with sodium thiocyanate helps determine the number of moles of silver ions in excess. The number of moles of chloride ions equals to the number of moles of silver ions that reacted in the precipitation reaction. Now, this number can be calculated by first finding the total amount of silver ions in the very beginning, and this is usually done by multiplying the concentration of solution by the volume added to the chloride ion solution. Once we find this, we can subtract the number of moles of silver ions in excess from the titration with sodium thiocyanate to finally give us the number of silver ions reacted. Then, since this is the same number as the number of moles of chloride, we can then use the number to calculate the concentration by dividing by the volume of the chloride ion solution. Fohar's method is preferred over Moore's method when determining chloride ion solutions when they are acidic. This is because the presence of hydrogen ions does not interfere with any steps of Vohar's method. Let's look at Vohar's method using a calculation example. 50 milliliters of a solution containing unknown concentration of chloride ions is added to 50 milliliters of a solution of silver nitrate. And this solution here has a concentration of 0.05 moles per liter. This reaction produces a precipitate and it is filtered with the filtrate being titrated against a standard solution of sodium thiocyanate. The reaction between the thiocyanate ion and the silver ion that is in excess from the precipitation produces a white precipitate of the silver thiocyanate. And the average titer volume after three repetitions is exactly 25 milliliters. Calculate the concentration of chloride ions in the solution in moles per liter. Now, we can start by finding the number of moles of thiocyanate ions that reacted in the titration by multiplying its concentration by the volume. This gives us 0.0005 moles. Since the silver ion and thiocyanate ions react in a one to one ratio, this is also equal to the number of moles of silver ion that was in excess from the precipitation. We can then use the volume of the silver nitrate and its concentration in the very beginning of the experiment to find the number of moles of silver ions initially. This is by multiplying its concentration again by the volume, which gives us 2.5 times 10 to minus 3 moles. The number of moles of silver ion that reacted with the chloride is equal to 2.5 times 10 to minus 3, so the number of moles at the beginning, by the number of moles that was in excess, which gives us 2 times 10 to minus 3 moles. Now, we know that silver ions and chloride ions also react in a 1 to 1 ratio, so the number of moles of chloride that was in the solution is also 2 times 10 to minus 3 moles. We can then find the concentration of chloride by dividing this number by the volume. And this gives us 0.0400 mole per litre. 